What is going on YouTube? My Doug Sharky. And today I'm going to be working on a uh, kind of a unique power supply module for LDMOS in the mobile. And uh, let me give you a breakdown of what I've got started so far. This is my first time attempting this. I think it's going to work out though. So um, basically what these modules are, I got 15 of them over here and they're all going to go in this box. And what these do is these step up your voltage. They're basically just boost converters. So they'll take a lower voltage and step it up to a higher voltage. Now these ones can go pretty high. They can go up to 80 or 90 volts. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed, you know, your automotive voltage 12 to 14 volts in. And I'm going to put 65 out for LDMOS pallets. So the reason I've got so many of them is because of the voltage differential. So I'm going from a really low voltage to a really high voltage. So I'm going to need a low voltage with a huge amount of current and a high voltage with very little current. So these modules, um, they're capable of using a 30 amp input. So 30 amps is the most that you can feed into them. So let's say for example, you had 10 volts going in at 30 amps. That's 300 watts. You can pull a maximum of 300 watts out the other side. So um, if I was running that at 65 volts, you know, 300 divided by 65, whatever that is, that's how many amps I could pull out of here at 65 volts. So what I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm estimating about 12 to 14 volts going in and I'm pulling 65 out. So with 30 amps at 12 to, uh, I'm, I'm estimating about 400 watts going in. So I'll be able to get 400 watts out of each one of these modules. So you couple that all together and the whole unit is going to be capable of supplying somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,000 watts at, um, at 65 volts. Now, one of the cool things about this is if I had a higher voltage going in, I wouldn't need so many of these converters because the limiting factor is 30 amps going in. So if I had like 48 volts going in, I would only need a quarter of this. I would only need probably four or five of these to get the same amount of voltage out. But because our cars run on 12 volts. Maybe one day they'll make the switch to 24 and everything will be a little bit better. But for now, everything's running at 12 volts, so I need 15 of these suckers to do what I want. And when it's done, this should be sufficient to supply a four pill LD MOS amp. That's the goal. I'm gonna make, it to make an attempt at this and I think it's gonna succeed, but let's, uh, let's keep going with the project and see where we get. So, <clears throat> This is my chassis. It's uh, an ICA power supply cabinet. I scavenged it from another project um, that I purchased off of somebody. They had a bunch of uh, switcher modules in here. So it's got some extra, you know, pre-drilled holes. Um, I took it over to the machine shop and milled, um, or I didn't mill, I just stuck it up in the milling machine and drilled a bunch of holes for these modules. So these are all ready to bolt up in here. But before I do that, I've got to figure out where I want to mount my binding posts for 12 volts coming in and I need to figure out what I'm gonna do for power going out. For power going out, I'm probably just gonna run a couple of large gauge wires through some uh, th through some cord grips over to like a 175 amp Anderson connector. And on the other end, I could do whatever I want with that. But power going in, I'm gonna use two pairs of these. So when this is all done, it'll probably draw about 400 to 450 amps at, uh, at 12 volts or at 14.4 volts or whatever it happens to be. So each one of these will be running about 200, 225 amps, which I think is, I think is good enough. But uh, yeah, let me move on with this and uh, we'll see where it goes. All right, so as I'm getting a little deeper into this project, I figured I'd start checking these things out a little more thoroughly. So one of my ideas to cut down on the amount of wiring that's going all through the box is to just use the chassis as a ground. So my input lugs here are all grounded, output lugs are grounded. And the output on these is floating from the, the chassis connections. Same with the input. So these, uh, these standoffs are not connected to anything on the circuit board, they're just isolated. So I figured what if I take, what if I take the negative connection on the output and the input connect it to one of these standoffs and uh, just use the chassis as a ground. That way I only have to run a, a positive wire to each one of these. Well, I did that on this one. So basically what I did is 
let's see where's my orientation okay so this connector is the negative so I soldered a wire from this brass standoff over to these terminals here and I did that on the input side as well so the one on the left is the negative and uh, I soldered a wire from here over to there and in doing so had an unintended consequence well it's a somewhat intended consequence so when you're working with radio frequencies you want to have a continuous ground all throughout your system you don't want to have any interruptions you want to have your whole system thoroughly grounded and the way that this has current protection is by putting a shunt on the negative side so by connecting the ground on the output to the, to the same connector as the ground on the input basically we have bypassed that current shunt right there so that little loop of wire is a current shunt and that's uh, that's used in conjunction with this potentiometer to limit the output current well, basically, we've eliminated the possibility of that even working anymore. So our output current limiting has gone out the window, but that's okay. Uh, for the price of these little suckers, I'm not too worried about them. And um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a current limiting diode on the, uh, on the positive side of this anyway. So by connecting the output negative to ground and the input negative to ground and doing it through the chassis, I've saved myself a handful of wire and um, I've made my ground system continuous throughout the entire unit but I just wish they would have put this shunt on the positive rail instead of the negative rail for obvious reasons that way you know your ground doesn't have to be lifted so in order for this to work this this ground can't be the same ground that's connected to your input but this one is the one that's got the connection soldered so you see there's a wire there soldered to that standoff so our ground is coming from the chassis up through these two standoffs. And um, I've been testing it, so I tested it and plugged it in and verified that the current shunt is no longer doing its job. So this potentiometer, if you turn this up or down, it'll current limit the output. Well, that's no longer working. I've spun it all the way in one direction, all the way in the other direction. The current limiting isn't doing, doing much at all. Um, so over here I've got a 5 ohm resistor connected just to test, test it with a load. And so far it's doing pretty well, so let me see. Alright, so this is the voltage across the resistor. That's this lead and that lead. So we're measuring the voltage across our 5 ohm resistor. And this meter is measuring the input current to the board. So I'm going to turn this up. Uh, supposedly the board is limited at 30 amps, but it actually goes past that pretty comfortably. Focus. There we go. So as you can see the board is drawing you know, 35 amps or somewhere in that neighborhood and uh, it's not having an issue. It's putting 45 volts across that resistor. I'm going to turn it down now just because I don't want to. That resistor is not meant to handle that. Um, but so far so good. It's, uh, it's doing its job. I've tested it in other situations with higher output voltages. Um, I don't have a, a different high value resistor to test this at 65 volts, so I'm just you know giving it as much as it can. But um, anyway, that's the plan. I'm going to start putting all these modules in here. Well, first I got to solder the uh, standoff to the, the negative connection on all of those, and then once that's done, focus. Once that's done, um, I can start wiring these into the chassis. So yeah. I'm going to go do that and I'll be back. All right, so I got a few of these mounted up in here. And uh, I figured I'd start with kind of a small scale test before I go on paralleling all of them just to make sure, you know, nothing pops up. Um, so, so far, I've got them all hooked in and I've got the output voltages matched pretty closely. So, I don't have a meter that reads voltage down to you know millivolts when you're up in the 65 volt range so what I've done is I've set one of these to 65 volts on this meter and then I've gone and matched all the other ones to this one and when I put the rest of them in there I'll, I'll do that same that same thing I'll match all the other voltages to this one and I've done that Here, let me turn this on show you okay so right now we're measuring the first one here 65 volts. I put a little resistor on there just to give it a little bit of load. Um, it adjusts easier that way. So we've got this one at 65 and then what I'm doing is I'm measuring between the positives. 
on each one of these. So I measure from the positive on this one, compare it to that one, adjust it so there's zero difference, compare it to that one, adjust it so there's zero difference, and so on. So uh, right now my lead is on the positive side of this supply, and I'm going to go over and connect this lead to the positive side on that supply. And then I'm going to set my voltage meter down to the, the lowest setting, and I'm going to adjust to get that as close to zero as possible. Now you can see it jumping around a little bit. Um, it's been doing that the whole time. It's been fluctuating, but I've just set them about as close as I can. And uh, with you know 10 or 15, 20 millivolts, that's not going to be a problem for me. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance the current coming out of them with a diode. So these have resistance to them. They have voltage drop. And uh, they, they function both as a diode and as a current balancing resistor. So I've used this technique on this supply over here and it's worked out pretty well. I, I had to use a lot more diodes but you know that, that was the theory and it worked out really well. So I'm going to do that with these. I'm going to put a diode on each one of them and that should keep the current fairly balanced even though they aren't exactly the same voltage. But uh, yeah, let me, let me put these in, get the positives hooked up on all these and um, I'm going to run it through some tests. All right, so I got this thing together for testing. I hooked it up to my five ohm resistor. So at 65 volts, that'll be about 13 amps. And uh, I think there's a balancing issue. So I turned the power supply on, fed it in here. And it was working momentarily, but then one fuse popped and then another fuse popped and then another fuse popped. And I think I stopped it before the last couple popped. So clearly these diodes that I've got on here are not enough to balance the current between them. So, I do have a plan for that. I'm thinking resistors. Let me replace these fuses, get the resistors in there. Let's see what happens. Oh, by the way, um, before I did this, I was having other issues, and it was because um, the voltage drop <laughs> between the power supply and here was dropping the voltage down to like 10 volts. So basically what I had is I had some of these that were saying low voltage and then some of them that weren't. And uh, I think that's just because they're not all set to the same lowest voltage setting. So that threw me for a loop. I had to figure that out and that was just low voltage coming into the thing. But uh, yeah, now for the next challenge. Let's see what happens. All right, so it turns out three of those modules blew along with the fuses. So that's nice. You know that old saying about uh, the fuse doesn't protect the transistor, the transistor protects the fuse? That's basically what happened here except they both murdered each other. So the fuses went and uh, I'm assuming that's because one of the transistors in there shorted. But um, I put in some balancing resistors. So right now three of these boards work, two of them don't. So the ones without the fuses, this one here, and this this board here, those ones are, are not receiving power. Um, so these are 0.22 ohm ceramic resistors. And it seems to be working. So I'm running it with three of these. And it's drawing about, actually the voltage drop is pretty bad because of these resistors. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing it's drawing about 10 amps. And nothing's blowing up yet. Let me click this on if I can. It's not doing it. Um, how can I do this? I can't do it one-handed. Yeah. This power supply is those modules that I don't know if you saw the video on this power supply, but the modules in there they're they're cranky. Um, but anyway, I had it running with three modules just a minute ago, and uh, it was putting about 56 volts into this resistor. So the voltage drop on that's pretty bad, um, but you know, it's, it's better than blowing up modules, I guess. So, at this point, I'm going to get it to turn back on. Um, that's first, all I have to do is plug that, plug that Anderson connector in when it's hot, and it, it works. you got to turn the power supply on and then plug it in. Um, once I do that... I'm going to measure the current going through each one of these and see if it's balanced. I want to see how well it's balanced. And uh, after that, I'm going to hopefully get some good results. If not, I might have to reconsider this whole project. But we shall see. To be continued. 
All right, so I've uh, made a little bit of progress here. So I checked the balance between the units, uh, the ones that are not blown anyway, and the current balance is really good. So I was getting 2.8, 2.8, and 2.8. Current balance is looking good. But I figured out why my meter is not uh, it's not reading a very good voltage. And that's because there's a lot of noise on these things. So if you look at all that high frequency noise, the voltage is right up at 60. There's a lot of noise. So I'm going to try and uh, try and get rid of that. I've got some ideas. Uh, snubber caps, inductors, whatever it takes. I'm going to try and tackle that before I go any further. Let's see what happens. All right. So I've made the determination that most of the noise that I was seeing on here is actually coming from this power supply, which is fine. This doesn't actually get you know, used on the air or anything. It's just for bench testing. So right now I've got this uh, just hooked up to my little lab supply into a tiny little resistor just for a little bit of load. And uh, let's take a look at the ripple here. So that's 50 millivolts per division. And uh, that's the output of these guys right here, all paralleled and working together. And uh, that's pretty reasonable. You know, most power supplies you see aren't gonna be a lot cleaner than that. I'm really curious to see how that compares under load, but I don't have a clean input power supply big enough to test with. So that remains to be seen. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over and plug it into my radio and um, actually not into my radio. I'm gonna plug this into some accessories that are hooked up to my radio and I'm gonna turn it on with the clean power supply and I'm gonna see if it generates any birdies on the waterfall. And uh, hopefully not. You know, if it does, I might have to consider some more filtering and stuff, but you know, usually one or two birdies is no big deal as long as they're not on channels you use. But um, all this is good to go. I just got to replace the blown modules, the two or three of them that I blew up. Uh, I'm going to need some extra fuses because uh, I, some of them just broke as I tried to take them out. And then I'm going to slap them all in there and tidy up the wiring. I'm going to find a way to hold down these resistors so that they're they're not just kind of hanging out and flapping in the breeze. I'm going to find a way to securely mount them. And once I do all that, I'm going to slap all the modules in there and give it a go. But, uh, that, that about concludes it for today. It's going to take probably two weeks to get the rest of these modules because they come from overseas. And um, I'm going to call it good for now. But uh, this is Mud Duck Sharky, and I'll be back with another video when this is done, and I'll show you what it does. Um, like I said, I originally designed it for a 4-pill LD MOS, which I haven't built. So, you know, in order to fully utilize the thing, that would, that's got to come first. But um, I'll, I'll definitely show the, the end result of this once it gets done in a later video. But uh, thanks for watching. One more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, putting a capacitor across the output actually filtered out a huge amount of the ripple. So if I take that capacitor off there, you see a lot more ripple coming out of these. And the uh, resistors and the diodes and the capacitor, they all work together to kind of kind of do a pretty decent job of filtering. So when it's done, I'm probably going to permanently mount a bunch of uh, 0.1 UF capacitors across the input and maybe or across the output power and probably a sum across the input as well. But anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there.